Welcome back to another episode of the Reason to Behold podcast with Tolly Talks. And Arnold Reasons. I thought you were going to give it the YouTube live intro again. I know, but I forgot. It's been a long day, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I hear that, bro. I hear that. But I've got a scenario for us to talk about, bro. Is this like a uh, fair or foul? On... No, 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 no. It's not nothing like that. It's actually more okay. of a scenario to speak into, I would say. Okay. So we talk a lot about seed time and harvest. Okay. We speak a lot about the principles that God set out and how different things that we can do can lead to us experiencing positive financial results, right? Nothing mm -hmm. cryptic. In a few conversations that I've had lately, there's been a common theme that I've noticed come up and it's been around just the subject of believing that those things can work, not in general, but can work for you. Right? Okay. So the question that I'd like us to speak on and speak to is if someone listening said, right, I hear all of that stuff about seed time and harvest. I hear all of this good stuff you're talking about, the principles of God and how if I practice the principles, I can experience the financial prosperity and more. But I don't fully believe, I'm not fully convinced that they will work specifically for me. What would you say to somebody in that position? Well, Arnold. What I would say I'm not to the person, bro. You call me by name, bro. <laughs> hey, yeah, because I'm talking to you. But you know what? Saying that though, mm. it's not impossible for me to think something like this, right? Asking for a friend. Yeah, yeah. When, when I said anyway, Arnold, I wasn't. It wasn't because I was trying to, to at you. I was no, just responding. Fine. Use to me, say, bro. That's oh, fine. Go with my name. That's fine. No, no. What, what I would say, Arnold, to someone like that is mm. that a few things. One of them is that in the nicest way possible, you're not that special. <laughs> because, <laughs> because in the nicest way possible, of course, these are laws that God has get, put in place to govern the whole world. So mm. why would it not work for you and only you? Mm. Right? Like, what reason? God is not, God's not even a respecter of persons. And when unbelievers flow with the laws that God has put in place, it works for them. Mm. So mm. why all of a sudden would it not work for you? Mm. You know, like if you plant seed in the right soil, you water it, you give it the right sunlight, all of those stuff you take out of it, it's going to grow. That is the laws that God has put, put in place. And I think it's actually in the Bible about what I think it might be Genesis. Let's find it. Let's find it. Bible verse. Because as long as the earth remains. Yep. 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 I think it might be eight. Genesis eight twenty two. Mm -hmm. So let's get it. So just so that, because some of it is sometimes we don't understand that this isn't just like a nice Christian principle. Like this is what God founded the world on. Do you see what mm. I mean? Like this is how the world works. So mm. it's like gravity. Gravity applies mm. to everybody unless you do something to make it not apply to you like go out to space. But even there, the rules of gravity apply just in a different way to hit. So mm. it's Genesis 8.22. And for and those says, that might be listening audibly, we got a little visual for you too. So check it out on YouTube. Oh, I, Run I, I got confused because I was like, what, what did I do something wrong? I thought I broke it. <laughs> <laughs> it says, and this is just after, for context, this is just after um, the flood, right? Mm. And so this is where God is making promises. And it says, so if we go back to uh, verse 20 well verse 18 to so Noah, his wife and his sons and their wives left the boat and all of the large and small animals and birds came out of the boat pair by pair then noah built an, art, an altar to the lord and there he sacrificed as burnt offerings the animals and birds that had been approved for that purpose and the lord was pleased with the aroma of the sacrifice and said to himself i will never again curse the ground because of the human race even though mm. everything that they think or imagine is bent towards evil from childhood. We can talk, have a whole other episode on just that bit. <laughs> I will never again destroy all living things. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest, cold and heat, 
summer and winter, day and night. Mm. So it's like these principles are just universal principles. It's not, why would it not apply to you? So I think that mm. that's one thing. I think the other thing I would say is, are you doing the things that you're meant to be doing? right? So are you planting the right seeds? Are you watering those seeds? Are you taking care and nurturing the seeds that you're planting? And are you actually reaping your harvest at the right time? Because bro, you could have all the harvest, but if you didn't reap it, you would still be experiencing like you didn't have anything. So my second thing is that if you feel like those things are not working for you, it means that you're not working it. Because for me, these things, they work if you work it, right? If you do the things that you're meant to do, then it will happen. If you're not doing the things that you're meant to do, then it won't happen. So my question, second thing would be, okay, are you doing the things that you need to be doing? My third mm. thing is like, do you actually believe? Like, cause if you believe Ooh. you do different things, you know, do you really believe that this is, and that's why I took it to the word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. What is it that you believe? And why is it that you believe that? Do you know what mm. I mean? Like, why do you believe that it might not work for you? What is that based on? And does that line up with the word? Because that's really mm. what is going to make the massive difference as well. Mm. And that's really good, bro. And I think, do you know what? Even on the verses you just pulled out, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one of the interesting things is that it, it there is nothing that it's contingent upon to do with yeah. like your activities, how good you are, how like how much you've done of it. There's no like pre requirement that says that so long as you have done all of these things, then seed time and harvest will remain. But like you said, it's mm. just down to, it's an established principle. As long as the earth remains, seed mm. time and harvest, mm. right? Mm. Um, and I, for me personally, also looking at some of the other things within that same verse helped me to encourage myself just generally day to day and remember that this thing really is just there because it's yeah. like cold and heat. Is it still cold and hot? like summer yeah. and winter do we still have a summer and a winter yeah <laughs> day and night still happens yeah. every single day um and it's grouped in that same set of things um so that's one thing that i think is is encouraging and i think the other thing is as well that he says this after he's just wiped out the whole of humanity right mm. and spared noah his sons and a few people more right and i think it's interesting how even as you read on in Genesis, you get to hear how Noah gets drunk, his son, one of his sons, Ham uncovers his nakedness and all of that, or exposes his nakedness, blah, 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 blah. Like sin continues in the earth, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in different ways. And it plays out in different kind of um, outplays, but you still see along the way, that same principle of seed time and harvest continuously playing out. Mm. Um, Mm. So I think those are a few things I Ooh. think that we can be encouraged by. Go on, you got something? I think, because I was just thinking about what you said about like whether you do anything or not, it's just going to be there. And it just got me thinking that seed time and harvest, like the seasons and the conditions to make things grow, et cetera, are always going to be there. It's about yeah. are we taking advantage of it and are we participating or not? That's yeah. really what it comes down to is am I participating? Am I sowing seed? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good way to put it because the in the same way that cold and heat are going to be there, right? Mm. Mm. If it's cold and you don't decide to put on a jacket, you're going to suffer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If it's hot and you decide to go out in a jacket and all of these layers, you're going to suffer. So it's mm. about getting in sync with the, the, the thing that has been established mm. and working um, with the principle itself. You said something which I thought would be worth unpicking a little bit more. And you spoke about, are you doing the right things? Mm. What would you say are the right things that should be done? So like assuming someone has never engaged with these principles before, right? Starting from ground zero, they've just about gone past being able to believe, okay, fair enough. I've heard what you guys have said and I can't find a case as to why this wouldn't work for me. Right. So like, mm. okay, so what are the right things that I should be doing? What would you say to that? I think it's sowing seed is definitely one of them. So I think that, for example, like, you, you know how I feel about Brother Alex, right? So where he talks about doing the work, 
You know, are you mm. doing the work? Are you, let's say, for example, you have a business. Are you making the phone calls? Let's say, for example, you're an employee and your job is to answer emails. Are you answering the emails that you should be answering? Are you trying to add value into people? Are you sowing into people? Like for me, the first thing is sowing the seed, right? That's the first thing. Are you doing the things that you're meant to be doing to sow seeds? I think the next thing for me is about nurturing it. So it's that thing of, you know, actually sometimes we tear down our good work or like we pull up our seed. You know, so you might have sown a seed, you might not be seeing results. You start saying, this doesn't work. I don't believe it works. See, I told you it doesn't work. Mm. You're literally pulling the mm. seed out of the ground. You're not even giving it time to do its thing because you're going to give mm. up on it because it's not grown fruit in like two weeks. So it's mm. like, that's one of the things is, are you nurturing the seed? So, okay, you've sown some good seed. Are you now doing the things to add to that? Or are you doing things to pull it up out of the ground? And I think that that, that is often actually where people really miss it is that they, mm. they're not patient with the season and they're not patient with how long it takes for these things to grow you know like we need to start thinking in much longer time horizons mm, mm. you know what you said the key word and now i'm actually going to quote bishop hormozy right <laughs> Bishop, because <laughs> he actually he... <laughs> yeah <laughs> go see his fruit he did he has a really interesting way that he's spoken about patience right oh yeah and like he's explained about how when we speak about patience people usually think it's like this special like characteristic that you're supposed to develop but he simplifies it and says patience at least the way he sees it is finding something else to do in the meantime right yeah occupying that same time whilst whatever needs to happen needs to happen and for me that perspective has been very very helpful i can't chapter and verse it but it's been helpful because like i i'm i'll confess i know i am left to myself i'm very impatient bro like when it comes mm. to the idea of seed time and harvest like i'm the guy that as soon as before the seed has even been covered up by the dirt, bro, I want to see a tree, right? Mm. <laughs> Not yeah. only do I want to see yeah. a tree, I want to see a tree that's <laughs> given birth to like 10 other trees. Like that's how left to myself I would, um, I would be. But I have honestly found that the more that I think about, yes, doing the important work of putting the seed in the ground, what are the practical things that need to be done to put it there? What are the, what is the dirt that I need to put on top of it? How do I need to maintain it in the meantime? But if you've ever done any gardening or you've ever planted any seed in the ground, you don't just put the seed in, put dirt on it, and then just hold the water and can over it 24-7. It's like you water no. it and you go away, right? Mm -hmm. And then you come back the next day and then you go away and then you come back the next day and then you go away or whatever your frequency is. And so I've been finding with some of the things that I know that I'm having to really just accept, it takes time. I'm finding what are the things that I can do to just go away and keep busy. So that I can come back when I need to, to maintain and keep things going, but then not make the mistake of just putting the seed in the ground, putting the dirt on it, holding the water can over it and just expecting it to just become a tree straight away. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I, I think I heard that yesterday and I've just been trying to just work it through and understand it and say like, because also what I always check with, you know, Bishop Hormozy is, okay, he's not, he's not a man of faith, right? He's very humanist. Yeah. Depend, depends so I, on what he said. Depends. Depend, he might. He might say otherwise. Uh, does he? He might say otherwise. I've if not you heard listen that. closely, if you listen closely, there's some things that I've heard him say. He, I haven't heard him explicitly actually say what his position is. Interesting. However, I have heard him say a few things along the way, which have been a few little hints and dips that he may have at least been around it at some point. Yeah, well, that's as much as I can around it. And most people have been around is, it. Though, if we want to really go there, there's a lot of people that are around it who aren't really about it, right? Yeah. So for me, it's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> well, but anyway, that's, you make your point. Why, Don't worry about that. <laughs> that that's why, because I, I, I'd actually be intrigued to to hear some of the things that you've heard because most of the stuff that I hear from him, I'm like, nah, you're you're definitely not about it. So I'd be intrigued to see some of those things. Um, but Do you think it's just reason. because he's a lot more explicit about what he really thinks and how he lives? 
Uh, no, no. Like, no, because, you know, brother AF, like, I have some questions. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I've, never, might... I've never heard anything from brother AF that even gives me an inkling that he might be about that. <laughs> really? I have. I have. Really? Bro, do, do, you, do you not remember? Okay, so for those who don't know brother AF, this is Andy Frasella, right? Yeah. So one of his, like, old podcast hosts with him was a pastor, bro. Okay, I think I've seen one episode. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, he's been he's been around it, and some of the stuff he says, I'm kind of like, okay, he he doesn't want to let go of the cussing for sure, but neither yeah. does you know our friend Tim Ross. So you know, it doesn't necessarily. Oh, I go for Tim, bro. <laughs> bro, the cussing pastor. That's why. But, Any, okay, yeah, but you know, I, I'm gonna say this, and I'll let it rest. Yeah, the reason why yeah. I said what I said about do you think it's because he's more explicit is because truthfully, yeah. There's a whole bunch of people that are doing stuff in secret, right? And putting on a good costume and showing up at the, all of the yep. events and all of that kind of stuff, yep. holding their Bibles, preaching and all of that kind of stuff, and living life's equivalent, if not worse, than what some of these people are doing. And so that's the reason why I said, do you think it's because he's more explicit? Because no. he, he, he doesn't present as somebody who is trying to come across as I'm, I'm a bishop if the, if the listeners didn't get it he's not really about that though, by the he's way. not really a bishop yeah he's not <laughs> no, no 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 but yeah and, and that's i guess the question is right is that the christian mm. who, who is you know putting on the costume but then yeah you know doing whatever like are they really about it come on that's my point so and <laughs> so that, that's rather, where for me huh? Listen, yeah. I would rather you just live fully with what you're on and be what you're about rather than presenting with pretense. But are either of them about it? Say again? Are either of those people No, they're, about this it? is my point. They're both in the same category, bro. But, and that's ah. what I'm saying to you. Because they're both in the same category, why pretend? Like, live your life. Yeah. Do your thing. Do you yeah. get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And at least I know and I can honestly assess what you say because I know yeah. where you're coming from. So not, like I'd rather it, you don't it, pretend. Yeah. 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 Don't yeah. pretend. Don't pretend. Um yeah. we will be on a big detour there. I know, so. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> and we were naming people that like, you know, <laughs> anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um because I, I believe he's not a Christian, right? So yeah. I've always got to, and even if he was a Christian, you still have to measure what he says against mm. the word, right? And I was just trying to think about, is that what godly patience looks like? Do you know what I mean? But when, when we talk about it, like, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, like doing what you got to mm. do. So for example, with the cursing of the fig tree, yeah? Jesus cursed the fig tree, went about his day, went about doing other things, came back the next day, fig tree was mm. dead cool mm. like he didn't stand and watch the fig tree slowly curl up and wither he just went so i was just trying to think about like okay is this actually like is this good godly advice you know go and do other things so when he first said it, i was like let's say for example we're waiting on god yeah mm -hmm. what is god expecting us to do in that time let's say like for example and that's that's where like i just hadn't thought about it too deep yet so but abraham <clears throat> for example God had promised him a son. He didn't just sit there and do nothing in the meantime for the son. He went around doing other things. Mm -hmm. You know, even like David, when he was told that, okay, you're going to be the king of Israel. He didn't just mm -hmm. wait. In the meantime, he went around, did other things. He built other men up. He conquered different things. Like he did a lot of stuff in between. He served in Saul's house. So like mm -hmm. maybe it's actually a, a, a principle that we can follow. Hundred, and I think something that's helpful to analyze it for me is thinking about what does impatience look like. What's the opposite of it, right? Mm. How would you explain impatience? See, I've from some conversations I've had. Right, everybody has to wait. The question is, are you patiently waiting or impatiently waiting? So, for me, impatience has this like agitation to it. You know where, like, you have to wait. Uh, yes, yeah, I think so. So, for example, Give if you plant, yeah. if you plant a tree, yeah, you're going yeah. to have to wait for it to grow, like what we're talking about now, seed time and harvest. You know, let's yeah. say, for example, you're trying to build a business. Let's say you want to build a million pound business. It's going to be very rare for you to start it right now 
and then yeah. a minute from now you've got a million pound business, right? Miracle. Miracle Bro, like that that's crypto <laughs> on on absolute steroids. That's like, bro, and even if you do like a, a crypto rug scam, rug pull, yeah, you mm. still have to spend time building it all up, yeah, for your one minute of, of scamming. So nothing happens really instantly, does it? Like nothing really. So you're always going to have to wait one way or another, bro. Even when you microwave your food, you've got to wait for a minute. But the thing is, so what I'm thinking though, right, is even with like the business example. Yeah. If you're, if, if you're actually going to see it through, then absolutely. But it's like, if you didn't see the fruit that you were expecting to see or the tree you were expecting to see within whatever time frame you were expecting to see it, mm. if you are bought mission and you're no longer watering it, you've pulled it out of the ground and you've moved on to something else altogether, do you still have to wait? But you had to wait to see that it wasn't working. Do you see what I mean? How There's long? always going... But whether you wait for two seconds or two years you still waited that's my thing is that there's there's always going to be a period of time where you have to wait for something okay you still there yeah yeah still here still here um i wasn't sure if you were still here because you're frozen on mine oh no 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 i said okay yeah yeah so so i think that it comes down to what you do in that waiting period, however long or short it is. It's like, are you agitated? Are you anxious about it? Are you constantly like, about it? You know, that's, that's for me what impatience is. It's almost like agitation. Whereas patience for me is like calm. It's, I'm trying to use, trying to describe it without using patient, but it is just that thing. Like, you know, just settled like yeah. things are happening and i think it, there is something like you can go and do other things i do like that actually like you can go and yeah. do something else go and start something else that is in that season so for example let's say you know you're planting lemons and lemons need to be planted in winter and grow in summer you know once you've planted the lemons why don't you do something that is the inverse you know mm. you could be harvesting something in summer that needs to be planted so it's that kind of thing of actually how do you build your seasons and your life so that you can always have things to be doing you know because that thing of like the devil makes you know something about lazy hands you know devil makes work like the idle hands. oh bruv he'll give you work yeah he'll give you work yeah. so i don't want my hands to be idle and i want them to be busy with the right things mm. no i hear it man Hmm. I hear it and I think so I looked up um, patience and just synonyms as well and one of the words that came up was endurance Mm. Um, and I think going on this same thing that we're talking about it's like how you endure and what your endurance looks like I think can vary right because Mm. Mm. whether you decide to sit down and be the person that's like, yep, I don't mind. I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to wait for this thing to become a tree. Or if you decide to go off and do a thousand things and come back every now and then to water it and to um, do whatever is necessary to help it grow. Interesting. The end result is if both people practiced endurance and patience over the same amount of time, as long as they were both doing the right inputs, it's going to lead to the fruit, right? it's going to lead to the tree. Mm. Um, so I definitely mm. think there's a lot of flexibility in what we do whilst we're enduring. And I think where all of the other things that we're called to as disciples comes in is being wise about making sure that however, whatever it is that we're doing in the in-between yeah. is aligned with the characteristics and the nature we're supposed to have. And and I think that sometimes when we think about um, planting seeds, yeah, sometimes the way we talk about it is just like you plant it and that's it. But bro, you yeah. you and I both know what? from our garden and stuff that like, bro, every day there is work to be done. Bro, that every grass day. came through freaking fast. The weeds, <laughs> bro, that came listen. out of nowhere. Oh, listen, there's, there's always stuff to tend to it. So, and that's where I yeah. think even what God told Adam was tend to the garden. Yeah. Come on. And that's where, like, bro, the garden was perfect. There was no sin, no curse. I don't even know if there were weeds there. 
right? Because weeds mm. choke out and kill. So maybe there weren't even any weeds there, but God still told him to tend to the garden. So there was still something that needed to be done. So I just feel like don't underestimate what still needs to be done, even once you've sown your seed. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. So, and, oh, go, go ahead, go ahead. I, I, I had a perfect illustration of patience versus impatience. So when I go to restaurants, if you've been to a restaurant with me, you would have probably experienced a time where the food takes really, really long. My order is wrong in some way, shape or form. Or they just don't come and serve us. Like, bro, these things happen to me on a regular basis in restaurants. Mm. And I think that restaurants are my training ground for patience. (laughs) Because if I'm in a restaurant, bro, I'm hungry. Yeah. So the Mm. question is, am I going to keep getting up and down, bugging the waiter about it? Am I going to be rude to the waiter when my food doesn't come correct? Am I going to be annoyed when they don't come and serve us? Or am I going to be patient, enjoy my time Mm. with my friends and let the food come when it comes? Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's a mm-hmm. regular thing for me. It's like, okay, now I'm starting to keep looking over. Now I'm getting impatient. You know, just settle. Mm-hmm. Well, they'll come when they come, talk to my people, enjoy my time, and it will happen when it happens. You know, mm-hmm. that, that was one of the things I was thinking about in terms of patiently waiting or impatience. Mm-hmm. And what do you do when you see some weeds coming up? How about that for a question? Oh, bruv, you have to yank them out. <laughs> you have to yank them out. But do you, do you know do you know one story I've I've not quite got my head around in the Bible is you know with the wheat and the tares. Oh yeah, I've never really like fully got it. It's like yeah, let them grow up together. I was like, oh, yeah. didn't expect that. <laughs> Why? <laughs> <laughs> because, bro, my my it, my my gut instinct with when there are weeds, you tear them out, yeah. you pull them up, get rid of them. They're, yeah. They're not helpful. And if you don't yeah. stop them from growing, they will overrun your garden. Yeah. So that's something that I would love to get more understanding and revelation on is that particular story, parable, whatever it is. So I'm going to put it up and I'll share one of the things that I understood from it when I was studying it, which mm. may or may not help. Um, so it's Matthew 13. Bear with me. I'll share on the screen as well. Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Do you mind reading, bro? Which verse from, sorry, did you say? Uh, from 24. It's like this is the only verses I've put up. Do you want me to put the full chapter? No, no, I've got it on here. I I can't I can't oh, read it right now okay. from that tiny, no, that's tiny fine. thing. Um here is another story Jesus told. The kingdom of heaven is like a farmer who planted good seed in his field. But that night, as the workers slept, his enemy came and planted weeds amongst the wheat, then slipped away. I didn't even like have in my head that someone came and planted that, which is mm. also another dynamic of the story. Very interesting. When the crops, be- when the cro- cops, when the crop began to grow and produce again and produce grain, the weeds also grew. The farmer's workers went to him and said, "Sir, the field where you planted that good seed is full of weeds. Where did they come from? An enemy has done this." The farmer exclaimed, "Wow! Should we? I've never had that thought when I when I've seen weeds in my garden. No <laughs> my enemies have caught me. You know what? <laughs> it's so funny because." Me and um, me and my brother in law having this conversation last year in the summer, yeah, and we were talking about this gardening thing, right? And he was just talking about how all these weeds were coming up and all of that kind of stuff. I was complaining, and then he just came out with an enemy has done this. (laughs) (laughs) Goodness, no wickedness, bro, killing all my grass, but for what? (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, should we pull out the weeds they asked no he replied you'll uproot the wheat if you do let both grow together until the harvest then i will tell the harvesters to sort out the weeds tie them into bundles and burn them and put the wheat in the barn and then from verse 36 same chapter 
Then leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, the son of man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds amongst the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world and the harvesters are the angels. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace, where they will, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their Father's kingdom. Anyone who with ears should hear, should listen and, hear and understand. Just quickly pulling up one more thing. Give me one second. Yeah. yeah. I will summarize it. So, one of the um, other things that we know from scripture is it speaks about how it's not God's will that any should perish, but that mm. all should come to repentance. Mm. And one of the times when I was studying this, one of the thoughts that I had was that. God wants to save as many as he can. And even those that are driven and inspired by the enemy to mm. uproot can be converted by the power of God. Mm. So I suspect it's possible that one of the reasons is more of a salvific approach. Interesting. Um, and then the other side of that as well is for those that don't, get converted the case against them is even stronger because you were given absolute maximum time interesting i think as a conceptual thing i understand i think what's interesting is that it's like in um verse 29 it says no you'll uproot the wheat if you do and it's like that's a big part of the reason he's like no don't uproot it because if you uproot the weeds, because you know, like when you pull out a weed, bro, all the other yeah. stuff that comes up with it as well, it comes up with a little like chunk of everything else. So it's, 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 it sounds like from this, it's almost like, well, to protect the wheat, we don't remove the tears. So again, even on that as well, wheat's going to come in different forms, right? Because even within people within Christendom, you're going to have people that are more mature. You're going to have people that are less mm. mature, people mm. that are more at risk of something suddenly happening in front of them that causes them to say, oh, what kind of wicked God does this? Da, 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 da. I don't know, you know? Interesting. And then there are others that have more knowledge and understanding. Um, mm. But again, I don't know exhaustively. That's really Those interesting. No, that's, that's a really interesting way to think about it. Really, really interesting. Yeah, I've, I've always just wondered about this, like, because that's not the, the general. The general thing is you better pull them weeds up out of your garden. <laughs> but I, I um but it sounds like the wheat can still grow even when the weeds are there. And I think that that's a really interesting thing for us to mm. think about as Christians is that okay, even though there's lots around you like that, God is still expecting you to be able to grow. Not in like a harsh expectation way, but God has every understanding that you can still grow in that environment. Mm. So that's really interesting for me. Mm. For sure. Final words for this person as they finish listening to this episode and they're thinking about all the things that have been said on this subject of whether sea time and harvest and all of those principles mm. work for them. I think for me, it's really like it works if you work it. And that's, yeah. that's the general principle for life, right? Like when you do the work and when you do the things that you're meant to do, things will generally over time look the way that they're meant to look mm. like that's how this works you know so if you sow the seeds you water the seeds like seed time and harvest is there whether you believe it or not it's gonna yeah. work so participate you know like one of the things from from bishop paul mosey is um <laughs> <laughs> he says that He's sometimes gonna his church after this i'm telling honestly you. <laughs> One of the things that I like that he does, right, is he says that, look, sometimes when I tell people what I know will work and they say, oh, well, that won't work, that won't work for me. He's like, okay, you're, you're right. right. It, will, mm. it will never work for you and you'll be poor for the rest of your life. 
And everyone's like, no, no, no. It's like, okay, so which one is it? Either it's just not going to work for you and that's just your fact and that's your lot in life or you can, you're not actually doing the things to work it. So for me, it's like, if you want to believe that seed time and harvest doesn't work for you, okay, sure. You will never be able to reap anything then. But if you start to realize that it will work, you have to do your part to sow seeds, then mm -hmm. go do that. You know, you can kind of have it whichever way you believe, like whether you believe you can't or you can't, you can or you can't, you're right. Like it's, it's really, really up to you. And the, there's yeah. something that I really like about patience and I don't know who, who's the original person. It says, be impatient with your inputs, but patient with your outputs. Be impatient with your inputs, yeah. but be patient with your outputs. So okay. for example, if you're applying for a job, Apply, mm. apply, apply. Impatiently apply. Apply, apply, apply. Send all your stuff. If you're trying to network, message 100 people a day. Do your stuff impatiently. But then once you've done your inputs, be patient with the outputs. Okay, I sent out 100 today. Okay, no one's come back to me tomorrow. No one's come back to me the next day. Be patient with the outputs. Be patient with watching those things grow. But mm. impatiently do it. Like, do your stuff. Crank out. And that's where, you know, Oh, Maisie's saying about, okay, do your 5,000 flyers instead of 300. You know, like, do the volume that's going to get you the results and then be patient with the, with the outcomes. Sounds good. And would maybe, I would say maybe the reason why you think it doesn't work for you, because this is something that just occurred to me whilst we were talking, but maybe mm. it's because you have been impatient. Ooh. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, because I think if you're gonna, oftentimes faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith word. is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things unseen. Things not seen. So fear is usually to do with things seen, right? And mm. sometimes unseen. Sometimes it's unseen nothing to do with well. what you've heard as well. It's not even necessarily like what you've seen. It's like yeah. because, bro, some of the stuff that we're afraid of, you've never actually seen happen in real life no for real on both sides so i think and i think this is again this is where it's perspective and how you look at things and how you interpret different things as well because if you say for example yeah but i tried it and it didn't work for me but you're measuring mm. that based on you dropping the seed in the ground putting the dirt on putting the watering can over it and then not seeing a tree straight away then of mm. course but then it's like the more you understand about what should realistically be expected Mm. the more you'll know how to measure the feedback points you're getting mm. so like again if i expect that as soon as i drop that seed in the ground it's just going to explode into a tree then of no. course i'm going to be upset frustrated i'm going to feel like why is it not working for me they've all got trees i've just tried to do the thing they said that i should do and nothing's coming mm. up mm. um and again that comes back down to again impatience and when maybe you didn't even know you needed to be patient. Maybe bro, you didn't have sorry. A right who are you listening to that break. told you that if you plant a seed today, it's going to grow tomorrow? Who who did you listen to that told you that? But you know what? Because we're talking about the example of a seed and all of that kind of stuff, right? Take it into the context of being able to earn a particular amount of money, right? Yeah, but <laughs> who who told you that's quick? Who told you that that happens overnight? But this, this is the thing. That's why I said perspective and how you interpret data. Because if you're looking at the story of 10 people who seem to mm. be earning what you would love to earn, but you're not taking into account the fact that they spent however many years or whatever the yeah. time frame was to actually get there, yeah. and they started on half what you're on right now, yeah. then it's like you can have a wrong expectation, not even necessarily because someone said, this is how long it's meant to take. Maybe you haven't even had those conversations. And maybe you've just made assumptions, right? Mm. People coming out of uni. Like, I don't know how it is today. I haven't spoken to many graduates, right? But I remember when we came out of uni, there was a lot of people frustrated, bro. A whole bunch of people that felt scammed. And they felt like, I've just studied for all of these years. I've just spent all of this money and I can't get the job that I'm looking for, right? Much yeah, more bro, so even in our field. But that's because when we were growing up, we're told you go to uni. And when you graduate uni, you get a good job. Because that's also what happened. Yeah, but when did they tell already. you that you get a good job immediately? Because well, I never I think, heard that. Yeah. I, no one ever specifically said to me, 
that, yeah, I get the general gist of, yeah, you go to uni, you get a good job, 100%. But I feel like there are some details that we filled in the gaps ourselves, mm. right? Because yeah. nobody came and explicitly yeah. said to me, yep, it's going to take you, as soon as you collect that thing and you walk across the stage, there's going to be a thousand employers that are going to be calling you, offering you a great job, right? Well, do you know what though, bro? Like some, like I had a job before I left uni. So did I. Do you see what I mean? So, huh? So did I. But I applied earlier. So that's why. Exactly. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> so it's not even like not true. Yeah. But are people doing the things that you're doing, bro? I went to the job fairs. I made I've the, the curve, like, bro. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, it, bro, it's not even untrue. That's the thing. So it's like, have you done mind. It? bro? Come on. I, I looked I, at the field and I said to myself, hmm, this is when everyone else is applying. How about I slip in here? <laughs> exactly. Ex see? And this is what I'm saying. Like, people don't know that, though, right? Yeah. People might think, yeah. okay, but because Arnold went to uni, he got a job straight away. He just got a well, Arn yeah. No, Arnold went to uni, <laughs> applied early, and got a job straight away. If you look yeah. at the lead time between when you applied and when you got the job, it might even be similar to someone else who mm. applied after they graduated. Mm. So we don't know all the facts. And I, I really like what you said about assumptions, but, and sorry, not, but I think I like what you said about assumptions. Assumptions are what we're telling ourselves. Mm. It's that narrative that we have. And what we always need to be checking is, is the narrative that I have in line with the truth? Come on. That's for me, that's the, the bottom line of it is your assumptions, what you've been told, whatever it is that you're listening to, whether internal or external, you have to line it up and see if it's in line with the truth, in line with the word. Is that the truth of actually how this works? And I've got a perfect couple of verses to finish this off with, mm. which are exactly on this subject. And it is in Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse... I will go from verse three. Let me share the screen. Mm, I like where you're going. From verse three, it says, for though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine powers, divine power to destroy strongholds. We mm. destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take mm. <clears throat> every thought captive to obey Christ being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. And I think it's, there was a great example I remember being um, taught about years ago where someone was speaking about how there's a few different things they call it. I think they call it like the, the courtroom of your mind, other people, the sorting place of your mind. But it's like, it's the idea of recognizing that not every single thought and every idea that comes into your mind is one that you should accept mm. and how important it is to filter every single thought and idea, arrest it, interrogate it, take that thing captive, cross-examine it. And if it doesn't align mm. with the truth that God's word reveals or what God says about you, what his principles teach us, mm. put that thing in jail. Don't allow that thing to live and manifest. But oftentimes the mistake that we can make is just accepting every single thought that comes into our mind. And so then you've got that criminal thought that has just come into your mind and has now decided to take over the whole place, make a whole home, have some babies, mm. right? <laughs> Reinforce <laughs> some dead mindsets. Yeah. Um, with all of the the fears and the other thing that have been sitting there for years, they manifest, they they recreate, they reproduce after their kind. Agree. Um, and that's what leads to strongholds. Oh. But the encouragement that we get from this is that, like the verses say. The weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. Mm. So even if those strongholds have been built up, even if those criminals have had a bunch of babies and reproduced all of this nonsense in your mind, there is still hope that those things can be destroyed. I think what you said about they'll reproduce after its kind, I think yeah. that is so vital. Because mm. it says that every seed reproduces after its kind. Mm. You know, you're not going to plant an apple and get an orange. There is mm. no way that you can plant bad thoughts and get good fruit. It's impossible. Mm. Mm. It's impossible. Yeah. So we need to understand that everything that we think is a seed. 
So if you yeah. keep dwelling on that thought, what is it going to grow into? <laughs> if you keep growing on it doesn't work for me, what is that going to grow into? And what fruit are you going to eat? If, it keep, if you keep dwelling on, okay, this person doesn't like me, this person's horrible, where is that going to grow? Bro, even if that person is horrible to you, yeah, and you keep dwelling on the fact they're horrible to you, where is that going to take you? It's not going to take you anywhere good. That's where it says whatsoever is true, whatsoever is mm. lovely, mm. whatsoever is of good report. So, okay, someone saying that they don't like me, is that a good report? No. So why am I dwelling on it? Mm. It, can be, it can be a fact, but I don't need to dwell on that. Like, it's mm. so important, the thought seeds that we allow to grow in our heads. Yeah, man. Because they never stay the same size. Like, Nope. It's, it's... <sighs> Do you know what's really interesting, bro? Is that, and I didn't have this thought until now, good seed takes mm. work to turn it and to make it grow. Mm. Weeds? You ain't got to do nothing. Them things there will find something to just to satisfy and help it to grow. They will do it all by itself. And it's so interesting how a garden left unattended, and this garden episode is going to come up. We do it every year, bro, but not today. Um, A garden (laughs) left unattended. (laughs) All of the good seed, all of the Mm. good things will eventually perish. Like I've watched a bunch of nature shows. Weeds, though. Like you said, bro, like I went out into my garden the first time in a long time the other day, bro. All of this nice little um, garden area, all this I nice know, little right? area that we planted um, for our little girl with um, all these nice little flowers and stuff, bro. Like, because it's behind a bit of a, like, a dwarf brick wall. Mm. So I went around it and I saw nothing but just one big old weed, bro. Just growing, chilling. So, yeah. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of the Reasons for Hope podcast. Think about it. Think about it. It works if you work it. It's going to happen anyway. So, you might as well get involved. Thank you guys for listening and see you on the next episode. Peace.